Our dear learners and viewers, you are most welcome to this session. Teacher Robert from Light Academy Nazareth Primary School. I am here to present yet another lesson in Primary 4 Mathematics. So, for today's lesson, since we've just been looking at operations of numbers, we've seen many operations the addition, subtraction, and multiplication. At this time, I'm just going to discuss something concerning division of numbers. I think this is not something which is new. You actually did division in primary three, but I want first of all to relate to some of the words you were using in primary two, primary three. If we talk about a division of numbers, the word division comes from dividing, okay? I can even put a symbol of division which is written as this. This is the symbol to mean division of numbers. Earlier on in primary 2 and primary 3, you were using the word share. Sharing equally. We shall still use it. Because when we talk about dividing, we are meaning giving out or sharing among or sharing between we can share between when we are talking about dividing things between two people when we talk about sharing among us we are talking about giving to more than two people so the word sharing has the same meaning as the word dividing or division of numbers at a later stage we shall be able also to say that we can use the word quotient. The word quotient. These words, if I say sharing equally, sharing means division as number one. At a later stage, we shall also use the word quotient. Quotient of numbers. So when we use these two words here, sharing is common, then question we shall use it at a later stage. They have the same meaning as dividing of numbers, okay? So from primary 2 and primary 3, we can refer to these examples here. Examples. We can have the first one. In your primary 3, you could have such questions like when they say divide. Okay. Then they say 12 divided by 2, right? So in your working, in your method, just like in math, we need a lot of working. These ones, assuming they are 12 books, I'm giving them to two children. At a primary three level, this is what you would do, one of the ways. You had a lot of ways, but you could use one of these ones. I can use this one. I'm having two numbers, assuming this is one and this is a two, okay? The first one and the second one, because I'm dividing it by two, that's why I've put two columns here. So, the first one, assuming this is a person, I give this person a one ball, the second person another ball. Those are two balls. I count until I make 12 balls. This is the second one, this is the second for the other person. The third one, the third one for the other person. The fourth one, the fourth one for the other person. The fifth one, the fifth one for another person. The sixth one, the sixth one for the other person. So when I count all of these balls, they are giving me the total of 12. Since I've shared it between the two columns, it means the answer I get after that working is 6. That is what you were doing in your previous classes. Number two, we can as well have this one again and say number two. They can say share, share, or we can say nine apples among three girls. We're just referring, we are just visiting the work you covered earlier on among three girls okay so this one is the same as saying nine divided by three the working is very important so you could come decide this one's a three so you would draw up three columns like this 
This is one of the ways you were using. There are three girls, the first one, the second one, the third one. Just give them, I'm um, using the balls, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? Then you just pick up one of the columns and count the numbers of the number of the balls. So on the first one, this one has got one, two, three. So each one has got any three apples. Therefore, we shall say this one gives me the answer as a three. Okay? We can as well say nine divided by three. Since the question talks about apples, we can say three apples. Okay? This is what we are using in those other classes of P3 and P2. Now, for this primary four, regarding primary four, we are introducing, we are actually putting this kind of division at a different level. We are going to divide the numbers or to share numbers, but using what we are calling long division. We can have some examples at this level of primary four. We can say number three at a people level. Divide, I can write this one, 20 divided by 2. It looks simpler, but what is important is to know how to answer this or to divide this, this 20 by 2 using long division. What does long division look like? It's a symbol which is drawn like this. Some of your teachers have used this one as a bus. You can copy that idea, probably. So in this symbol, which you call a bus, for your explanation, I can't put 20, it's supposed to be put inside, so that one to which I'm giving should be put outside, right? So when we are using the long division, what is very important is to understand that we take one number at a time. But we must actually start from the left hand side going to the right hand side. For example, 20. 2 is the first number. So we shall start from 2 and go behind it. So we shall ask ourselves, when I take 2 being divided by 2, the, it, the number is 20. The first digit is 2. So I'm going to take this first digit which is 2. Then I will say 2 divided by this number 2. You can even go to the side where it has no problem. Have it like this and say 2 divided by 2. Each one gets 1 using our multiplication table. So I put this 1 which is the answer just above 2 which I've taken. Then we shall say the answer which is 1 multiplied by the number divided which is a 2. The answer I get is a 2. I subtract from the first number I took to see what is remaining. So we shall have one take away, I mean two take away two, the answer is zero for the first digit. Then since I still have another digit, I will pull it downwards such that it is a zero I write it down. Then I ask myself, can I divide this is zero? I've just broke down zero divided by our number 2. Is it a possible kind of step? It is impossible. So what am I supposed to do? When I divide 0 given to 2, the answer I get is a 0. So I will put that answer 0 up. Right? Then I will multiply that answer 0 by 2. So what I get becomes a 0. When I subtract, the answer is a 0. Therefore, when I divide it 20, by 2, the answer I get becomes 10, and that one shall have been finished. Right? We can have another one, another kind of a question. Like they say, work out. They can even use the word work out. They can say work out. Then they give such a question 160. 68 divided by 3, okay? One thing we need to understand is that when we are dividing these numbers, at times we can get the answer 
when it has the remainders, but at times you can also get the answer with some remainders. But just like I've said here, we shall not use this method of P2 and P3. We shall go straight and use our long division. So have this one, whatever you call it, and some other people call it the bus, draw up this symbol. The first number is written inside, then the one which is divided is written outside. But I've said, when we are dividing these numbers, you start from the left hand side going to the right hand side, and you take one number at a time. So I'm going to start. The working is important as well. You can use it. We shall start from 1. I say 1 divided by 3. Okay? Can I really divide 1 by 3 and each one gets up a whole? It is impossible because this number is smaller. Okay? So since it is impossible, I'm just going to have this one to write the answer as a 0 to mean impossible. So we shall come and say that 0 multiplied by 3. What do I get? I get a 0. Put it just under the first number we took in division. Put the subtraction side. 1, take away 0, the answer is 1. The 1 is still smaller. So what am I supposed to do? Go to the next number and drop it down. Such that you obtain a new number as 16. Right? Then we shall come and say 16 divided by 3. What happens there? 16 divided by 3. Each one, when we use our multiplication table we saw earlier on, when I divide 16 by 3, how many 3's can I get from 16? It means that each one shall get a 5. Right? But the remainder is 1. Because if each one gets a 5, then you say 5 times the 3. The answer I get is a 15. When I subtract 6 take away 5, the answer is 1. Then 1 take away 1 is 0. Meaning I've got a remainder which I wrote here as 1. So it is the same remainder I've got it here. So since I still have any other number, I'm going to drop this number still down. The new number I've gotten now is 18. I've gotten the new figure as 18. Then I will ask myself, when I divide 18 by 3, what happens there? Using the multiplication table, what number do I multiply with the 3 to get 18? The answer is 6. So I will write my 6 up here. Then I will say 6 multiplied by 3, the answer I get is 18. I subtract to see what is remaining. 8 take away 8 is a 0. 1 take away 1 is a 0. Therefore, we shall come and say 168 divided by 3, the answer obtained is 56. Okay? By doing this one, we shall have divided 168 by 3, right? So because of time, we would have given some other work, but you can stop at this. But don't forget, at the end of it, we shall have some work to be tried out. Thank you so much for being part of the lesson. Our dear learners, this is the activity that we are going to do after listening to the lesson. I think you will be in position to enjoy this work. Thank you so much for being attentive for this session. Teacher Robert, later academic nursery primary school.